Hey guys, so today this video is going to be about how to mentally prepare for the upcoming birth of your child. Um, this video was, was requested, I think, in early January or late December. So it's been a while, but um, yeah, at least I'm getting around to it now. <laughs> um, so anyway, there are several things you can do to mentally prepare for the upcoming birth of your child. Um, if we are just talking about the actual birth, the labor and birth of your child, um, you know, I'm kind of of the of the school of thought that a woman's body and mind kind of prepare themselves. Um, this is why you go onto social networks and you see, or any forum ever, and you know, you see women who in the beginning they're like, oh, I'm so scared of birth, or I'm so scared of what's gonna happen, or I'm so overwhelmed, or blah, blah, blah. And then you kind of get to the end of the pregnancy and they're all like going, oh my God, I wish I'd just go into labor, like I've been walking every night and doing jumping jacks and walking backwards and debating castor oil and I'm gonna go drink something not good for me, like et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is because the their mindset has changed and it's just I think it's just part of human nature um, my grandfather is quite ill right now and he's very elderly he's like 92 and he's been saying things like I'm ready to die and you know I'm done <laughs> I'm tired and as hard as it is for me to hear things like that I kind of think of life like birth um, because in the beginning of pregnancy you are overwhelmed and you are scared of what's going to happen and you are scared of how it's going to feel because you've never done it before but by the end you're like I don't care <laughs> I don't care how much pain this is like let's do this I kind of think life is like that I think that in the beginning when you're my age death is a really scary thing because you don't know how it's going to end and you don't know what's going to happen and um, when you get to my grandfather's age and you've been on this earth for almost a hundred years you know and your body's shutting down and you're tired you're kind of like I don't care I'm done let's do this so um, that might be kind of a weird analogy but for me it's kind of comforting because I think that um, the the body is programmed to take care of itself uh, emotionally for the most part um, I think it's when you put other outside influences in that it just becomes overwhelming for people or um, that's why we have some types of mental illness like depression I know that for myself um, I went through a very depressed stage as a young woman and it was just all the outside factors I think if it had just been me and just kind of able to do what I wanted when I wanted you know not not saying without consequences or anything but just being able to exist without an insane responsibility, which is what I had, um, I think I would have been fine, but because I had these outside influences like a very stressful work and university schedule and, you know, personal friend things, um, that's what caused the depression to set in really severely and um, so anyway, um, I, I just think that the body is for the most part able to take care of itself emotionally and with with labor I believe that this is a really really big indicator of that um, because I, I don't think I know many 42 week pregnant women who are like oh yeah I could do this for months <laughs> most of them are like no I'm done so um, I will say though that there are things you can do to kind of make yourself feel more on an even keel more accepting of the eventual labor and birth and there's sort of two points of thoughts right um my the way that i deal with things really well is i need all the information right like i read everything i um and i, and I like to get my information in a really unbiased way so i don't like to get my information from super like earthy birther kind of people i don't like to get my information from highly medicalized personnel um i like to get my info from kind of unbiased, these are your options, these are pros and cons for each option, and none of those option pros and cons are emotional. Like, I don't, I don't, the emotion thing isn't 
isn't how I make choices. The, the How I make choices is based strictly on these are the outcomes. Um, that said, um, in something like birth, it's really hard to separate the emotion from it because it is like a very personal experience that a woman goes through. Um, the other kind of train of thought that I have seen several people do, uh, several clients of mine actually, is they don't want to know anything. Like they do not read books, they don't watch TV, they don't, um, they don't want people to tell them stories, they don't, um, yeah, they're just, they don't want anything. They don't want prenatal lessons, like they just want to go for it, right? Um, and accept it as it comes. And for some people, this works really well. Um, I had a client who just had the most beautiful, calm, collected birth and, you know, totally un, un uh, medicated. And she was just so zen and so into it and, and so relaxed and so accepting of everything that went on. So if you're the kind of person who really is great at rolling with punches and you're like, you know, you're just, what's gonna happen is gonna happen then I, I think that might be a really good choice for some people. Um, as far as a baby and having a baby, I, eh, there's stuff that can prepare you slightly for it. Nothing's really going to get you 100% of the way there, though, besides having a baby previously. And even then, with a second kid, it can still be really overwhelming um, because no two babies are the same. So I think the only thing that would really prepare you super well for a singleton is if you had twins first. I think you'd be pretty great for that. Um, but I think that there are things you can do again. If you have friends that are having babies, um, I would go and like ask, can I come over and just kind of watch? Like you can show me how to bathe the baby or how to hold them or can I watch you breastfeed or... Um, you know, can I be there when you put the baby to bed? Can you tell me what your normal day is like? Can I hang out with you for a couple days? Um, I think that these sorts of things can be really helpful. Um, I find that in our society, we're all kind of really disconnected from each other and we're not, we're not like, it's not the way it used to be where you would have, you know, Mrs. Down the Street would come over for however long and bring a casserole every, like every time, right? Um, now it's kind of like you just sort of have to exist in your little bubble and, and while not every woman wants her mother-in-law to come live for three months, it, it's still kind of comforting to know that you could ask for help or help was just there. Um, nowadays, especially with the long distance that people live apart from their families in a lot of cases, I find that there is this social disconnect and there's a lack of community surrounding births of children, which is one of the reasons I became a doula is because I really wanted to support families as they went through this. It's such a huge change. Um, I'm kind of rambling. It's not succinct. I'm sorry. Okay. The other thing that you can do to really prepare for having a baby in the house is sleep. <laughs> I know that this sounds so stupid, but just sleep now and get as much sleep as you can and learn how to nap. Oh my god, learn how to nap. A lot of people uh, in our society don't nap and they don't know how to nap. <laughs> like, this sounds so dumb. But they don't know how to nap because they work full time or they've not napped since they were like five years old. So learn how to nap. Every afternoon when you come home from work, or even like at lunchtime, or if you don't work uh, outside the home, like literally schedule yourself a nap and nap. Lay down, close your eyes, relax, and sleep. Um, this is really helpful when you have children because when you have a baby in the house, you don't get to sleep very much. Um, certainly not as much as you're used to sleeping. So if you can sleep when your baby sleeps, which everyone says, but no one does, you know, do it because it's really good. It's a good idea. <laughs> um, the last thing I will say to help you prepare mentally for the birth of your child is to have all your ducks in a row. So have everything ready to the point where you feel like it's ready. 
you know, for me, ready was, I have a dresser to put some clothes in, I have diapers, and I have a bassinet. That was my ready. For some people, ready is they have painted the room, they have their crib set up, they have all the things, like the extra saucer and the playmat and all that sort of thing. Um, for some people, it's just like, I feel ready now and I don't have anything, right? It's totally up to you, but I do think that having all those little, like the paperwork ready, the, uh, the process for getting your SIN card or I think it's a social security number in the States or, um, you know, just, just knowing that you have people on speed dial who, if you are freaking out at three in the morning, you can call them. Um, knowing that your mother is coming over on Tuesdays and Thursdays to help you. Knowing, um, you know, like just having a support network. I think this is absolutely the most greatest peace of mind <laughs> that a woman can have is having the support network and knowing exactly where she can get it if she needs it. Um, as far as the birth, the, the pain, the labor, all that sort of stuff, I'm kind of, yeah, I'm sort of of the opinion that you'll mentally prepare yourself, that your body knows what it's doing and it'll, it'll get you there, where you're like, I don't care, like, just go for it, dude. Um, but yeah, as far as having a baby, there are things you can do, and, and, and um, I, I do hope this was helpful. I mean, I hope that it makes sense to people that having your ducks in a row and having a support network and, and having a community uh, with which to draw on um, can be a really good way to feel secure, to feel like you're um, not going to go crazy as soon as your baby gets here, to not be kind of dreading it, being alone, you know, because women don't have to be alone. I think that communities are, and people in general, are so excited about babies. It's just like part of our biology, that we're so excited about little babies. Um, and maybe not babies, like maybe they don't want to actually hold the baby, but they're just so excited about a person reproducing, um, that generally a woman can get support if she asks for it, and people are willing to support for, like, no reason. <laughs> you know, no payment, no cooking, they'll just come over and hold your baby for you. Um, I will be doing another video about support and support networks and ways that you can make your life easier upon bringing baby home, but I am going to leave that for another video because it's a little more concentrated on specifically the first like two weeks um, of bringing baby home and ways that you can kind of be really um, passive aggressive and get some great support. Um, I shouldn't say passive aggressive, but it is kind of passive aggressive, and I like that sort of stuff. So, um, anyway, we'll say reverse psychology because that sounds better. All right. So, anyway, if you have any questions or comments, please do ask them below. Um, if you have requests for videos, ask them below or send me a message. Um, and if you want, subscribe, thumb up the video. If not, thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll talk to you later. Bye.